Recently, I bought a large lot of old tech at an auction cheap, and you can watch that video by clicking there. But that got me thinking, can I cobble together a modern gaming computer from some of the stuff in that lot? Well, let's find out. This Acer Veriton came out in 2014 as a budget computer. What better to pair that with than the worst mouse I could find lying around. This Microsoft Bull mouse is yellow on top, but white on the base. So my gaming PC setup isn't looking all that flash yet, and no amount of RGB lighting will help. But with the help of today's sponsor, Opera GX, the gaming-focused web browser, you can optimize your experience. Opera GX allows you to customize your user experience just to your liking. Using the link in the description or in the comments, download it and try it for yourself. Setup is easy, and you can get it looking just the way you like it with customizable themes and colors. You can even choose between many different wallpapers, or upload your own, or select one of the many different ones available to easily install. You can even get Opera GX sounding the way you like with tons of free sound mods available, if that's something think you want. You can even force web pages into dark mode, so you'll never have to blind yourself during a late night browsing session ever again. If you're coming from a different web browser, the changeover is seamless and easy. Importing my bookmarks and accounts literally took a second. To reduce lag, there's CPU and RAM limiters, which is important, especially if your computer looks like this. But there's also Discord as well as Twitch integration, and the good features don't stop there. Keeping tabs on your usage is also super easy. You can set up and customize different profiles, check out the GX Corner to get free games, find deals and gaming news all in one place, and there's even a free VPN built right in. Customize game and browse the way you want thanks to Opera GX, and it's also available on mobile. To download Opera GX for free, use my link in the description below to enhance your gaming life. One thing I did forget that's important to a good gaming setup is a pair of speakers. I found these Harman Kardon speakers in an e-way spin close to 10 years ago. It has a rather aesthetically pleasing sub, which could really do with a wipe down. You really don't see designs like this anymore, do you? And I also found the filthiest keyboard, or should I say dirt board, imaginable. And I'm pleased to see that the PC does still turn on, featuring a 3GHz dual core Pentium processor and 4GB of RAM. It is possible to upgrade that CPU, however building a good gaming PC was never the goal here. Plus, our $0 budget might be stretched a bit thin with such an upgrade. Oh, and it also has no hard drive. And before we get to that, I gave the keyboard a wipe down with a damp cloth and some eucalyptus oil. This board must have seen a lot of UV light given how yellowed the tops of the keycaps are. Now onto the hard disk. A solid state drive would cost some money, but I do have a functional mechanical drive inside this dead Dell computer. Getting it out was very easy. These small form factor machines are great for upgrading, but today we're only interested in taking out the ancient 400 gigabyte hard drive. And this wouldn't be much of a gaming PC without a graphics card, would it? The massive lot of tech I bought a while ago had several cards. Hopefully they work, with the best one being a 1GB GT 610, which is perfect for modern AAA games. I was also sure to dust out the fan, which had clearly seen some use over the years. Now we can open up the little Acer machine, which is an easy task. It's honestly pretty clean inside, perhaps it didn't see much use. And to get access to the hard disk bay, the front bezel must come off, no screws required. Oh, and this PC does have USB 3, but only at the front surprisingly. I'll keep the optical drive in here, however you could always swap it out for a second SATA storage drive. The tray then flips up and out of the case. And while I've got this access, I could put in more RAM, trading the single stick of DDR3 for a matching pair of similar memory, bringing the total to 8GB. To get the most out of your RAM, it's always good to have matching pairs, same type and speed. This particular computer had never had its PCI slots used, and it was pretty satisfying removing this metal. The little GT610 fits in well and even has a VGA output, and since that's the the worst output available, that'll be the one we're going to use. Slotting in our salvaged 7200 RPM hard disk was also pretty easy. Two diagonally placed screws will hold it in well enough. Even though this is a low effort computer build, I'll still clean off the fan and apply some new thermal paste. It's the most basic CPU cooler imaginable, but for such a low powered processor, it will be more than sufficient. And the heatsink is held on with four spring loaded screws, which are designed to have even tension across the CPU die. And good thing I'm doing this as the old paste is looking and feeling a little bit dry. A bit of isopropyl alcohol got the surface looking very clean once again. If you're ever doing this, don't forget about the heatsink itself. And this is such a cheap one that I'm pretty sure it doesn't even have a copper slug. In other words, it doesn't dissipate heat as well, which is fine for a low wattage CPU such as this one. But if you were to upgrade to a higher wattage chip, I'd recommend putting in a better cooler. Now the reassembly can begin. It's an incredibly basic system, lacking a solid state drive, and how well will it perform? 
Better question, will it actually work at all? I hadn't tested the RAM graphics card, or I'm pretty sure the hard drive before. And it's all good so far. It's running and even has Windows 7 installed. And how about we install a resource-hungry operating system such as Windows 10? At first, this didn't look like it was working correctly, but a short time later I was in and began the setup. It was running, albeit a bit slow, and you forget just how slow a mechanical hard drive really is. It also looks like Windows activated itself, so I went ahead and installed some games I wanted to test. Hey, can your gaming computer do this? I didn't think so. For a true gaming experience, we really need a better screen. Ah, yes, that will do nicely. This game has one of the best songs ever written. A real good reason to turn up those speakers. This computer has no trouble playing old school RuneScape, which is so nostalgic, especially seeing it on a CRT monitor. The latest version of Minecraft is also very playable with a few settings turned down. Even at a lower resolution, it still looks really crisp and clear on the CRT screen. Stepping things up a notch, we've got the original Assassin's Creed, and while it's an old game, it's pretty impressive graphically. It also runs very well on this computer. BeamNG Drive at 640x480 still looks pretty good, largely thanks to the CRT display. On a simple test map, it's definitely very playable. Now it's time to really push this PC. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds at the absolute lowest settings wasn't very playable at all, even in the practice mode. And trying to play an actual match on a big geometry dense map was Slideshow City. Although I didn't think I was actually gonna get this far. For the last game, I thought I would let my brother take over. Playing a game of CSGO, he found it a bit challenging, mostly due to the mouse being less than ideal. He did take it pretty seriously though, and all things considered, the computer was able to play the game all right. What I've learned is that having a good speaker system does mask some of the shortcomings of a horribly underpowered computer, and that CRT monitor adds a coolness factor and also makes low resolution games appear pretty sharp and really crisp. Is this little Acer computer good for gaming? Absolutely not, but it tried its best and that's all I could ever ask for. You rest up now Acer, you've had a long day. Gaming PCs have definitely come a long way in the last few years, and this one is definitely not at that level. But I still had a lot of fun messing around with it for the sake of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.